What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to yet another addictive fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanegi and today we're gonna take you guys out on the lake and show you absolutely everything you need to know on how to go out and catch trout. So if you wanna learn more about this fun sport, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So to get today's video started off, be sure to click that like button down below and be sure to interact with this video and comment below with any questions you guys have or any comments and be sure to let us know what you guys think of this video and what you wanna learn after this video. So what we're gonna do today, we're gonna start all the way from setting the rod up, all the way from the reel, we're gonna put line on and then we're gonna take you around the lake and show you how to fish every method and hopefully catch a few fish for you as well. So to get it started right away, I'm gonna take my C30 Kaimar, I have this two to six pound Okuma Salilo ultralight rod. Any ultralight setup will work really good. As you can see, this is a two to six pound and it's seven and a half feet long. Anything under nine feet and in between that seven to nine foot range and you know one to eight pounds is gonna be the right rod for any kind of trout fishing. The reason for, you can see how flimsy this rod is. It has that nice action that makes it easy to cast lightweight and it makes it a lot of fun to fight smaller fish. So anything in that ultralight range, doesn't matter the brand, will work great. I love Okuma and I love the Okuma reels. So the reel I'm gonna put on this rod is a C30 size. The way they label these different reels for trout fishing or any kind of fishing is by that C30 range or a 3000 or 2000 or 4000. Uh, same with the, the 30, 40, 50. But usually with trout fishing, you want anywhere from a 10, a 10 series reel, like a, a C10 all the way up to a C20, 30, maybe a C40. C40 is a little bit big. So I got a C30 here today and it pairs really nicely with this size of rod. So I'm gonna take that, take that out of the package, remove everything, and I'm gonna stick that reel seat right here in that top groove. I'm gonna make sure that bottom groove is far enough down that it allows that reel to lay, lay flat right alongside the rod there, and I'm gonna twist that thing all the way till it's tight. The worst thing you can do is leave this thing too loose. You wanna over tighten it almost. Don't strip out those threads, but give it two or three really good wrenches down as you get it down to the bottom, because what can happen is as you walk around, as you cast, as you move this around in the truck, that thing can fall off and your reel can ultimately fall off and it might even be during fighting a fish, which is never good. So now we have this. We have a very flimsy, sometimes the handle doesn't even come on the actual reel. So what you'll do here, I'll start from the beginning here, and just in case you guys buy a reel out there that doesn't have this, you have this, oops, now you don't have it. You have the reel handle and you have the reel itself. And whichever side you like to reel on, I prefer my left side, some people prefer their right side. Whichever one feels more natural is gonna be the best for you guys. So I'm gonna take that thing, I'm gonna stick that little octagon shape right in that side. I'm gonna make sure this part of the reel handle is flat against this spindle. So I'm gonna hold that flat just like this with my thumb. I'm gonna stick this end in the other side and I'm gonna turn clockwise all the way down until it makes contact and this reel handle is actually tight. You don't want this thing to be loose. If you're starting to reel, one thing I see a lot of people do and a lot of my clients and stuff do when I'm guiding is they leave this thing loose and I can hear it hitting their spool as they start reeling like that. So if that's happening to you and this thing is loose, always go over here on the right hand side or left hand side and tighten up that bolt so that that reel handle stays right in place for you just like that. Next, a lot of these things come where you can reel forward and backward. This little lever here controls that. That's actually a bail lock. So you'll lock that and you can only reel forwards and not backwards. So when you hook a fish, that line doesn't come off and make a big mess out of your reel. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this wrapper off and I'm gonna spool this thing up for you guys. So the line I picked for us today is a high-vis braided line. This is actually an indicted enforcer line. It's one of our custom lines. It casts really, really nice. 20 pound might be a little bit overkill for the trout you're fishing for, but what it's nice for is that it casts really smooth through your guides. You can see that line out on the water, and we're gonna show you how to use a piece of line on the end of this so that you're not scaring those fish with that high-vis line. But this 20 pound indicted enforcer line works really, really good for trout fishing. So what I'm gonna do here to make it easy on myself so I'm gonna take my line and I'm only gonna put it through my very first guide to start with. That's gonna allow me to hold that line and keep tension against it while I reel onto that reel. I'm not gonna put it through every one of my guides and then try to spool that up. So the most important part of this process is making sure you flip the bale open before you tie the line to the spool like I'm about to show you. A lot of times I'll even forget to flip that open. I'll tie this on, pull it tight, go to start reeling and nothing happens. So I'm gonna open that bale, make sure I can tie my line on there. I'm gonna hold that in my armpit here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do three or four wraps around that spool just like so and i'm going to do this pretty easy you guys i'm going to make it simple for you i'm not going to tie any fancy knots or do anything special i'm going to do four passes around that and then i'm going to take and just do a bunch of overhand knots so as you can see here i made a little loop i put it right through that loop that i made 
I'm gonna pull it tight. Make sure that thing's wrapped all the way around. Pull it tight. I'm gonna make another one. Basically just doing a good old fashioned loop knot. Just a square knot and then pull it tight. We're gonna do this five or six or seven times until we get a good little knot going. And a lot of times you can either put a piece of tape or any sort of, of, uh, of fluorocarbon or, or some sort of monofilament a lot of times I'll use as backing so that you don't have to use as much of your braided line. You can spool multiple reels. But if you're doing a C30 size spool or a two or 3000, a spool that enforcer braid won't take you much. You'll be able to fill up two reels with one spool, so. So I've done probably about eight knots or so. I'm gonna do one more. I'm actually gonna do three wraps here and then I'll be ready to go. Cut my tag end, doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little bit of a tag end there. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close my line and I'm gonna hold with my right hand or left hand depending on which side you're reeling from all the way up by this first guide. And what that's gonna do for me is it's gonna keep that line tight and it's gonna evenly disperse it up and down on my spool. So once I've secured that line up here by this guide, I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna grab it with my left hand. I'm gonna tighten my spool a couple of clicks so that it doesn't take drag. And I'm gonna evenly just reel this stuff right up and onto the spool here. Now from this step, getting the proper amount of line on the reel is what's gonna be most important. It's gonna allow you to cast easier, it's gonna cause less tangles, and it's gonna cause less wind knots when you go to cast really hard. So I'll show you exactly what this thing should look like and how much line we should be putting on this. Okay, so I got this spool pretty much full. I could go a little bit more on here, but I'm trying to save some line for the other reel. But you can see there's a little bit of an edge on the edge of that spool. Right at the edge, you'd make sure, you wanna make sure not to go past that. But you also want it less than about two centimeters from the end of it. That way you actually have enough bulk of line on your reel to let it go over that edge of that spool and fly out of your rod tip easier. So I got that little bit of, a, I actually had a bumper on my old reel that I was pulling this line off of. I didn't use my spool, I actually used an old reel. So. I got this all the way down to the fluorocarbon backing, and this is connected with a blood knot or a double uni knot. And you guys wanna see this more in detail than I can show you here, so go check out the link in the description here on those knot tying tutorials that we have at Addicted Fishing and learn yourself some good knots that'll work good for putting that braid to that fluorocarbon line with a blood knot, double uni, crazy Alberto, any of the three, you can check them out on the bottom here in the link in the description. So I'm gonna take this fluorocarbon now and I'm gonna run it right through my guide. So I'm gonna open my bail back up little trick for you guys and gals out there you see how i've actually folded this line in half and with about two to three feet at the very end i fold that line in half to make myself a round little point there and that makes it easy for me because if i put this through and i drop it it doesn't just fall right back through all my guides and fall all the way out so my friends are sitting there laughing at me it falls down the rate where you just put it through and stops itself because that line expands all right there we go we have our ready to fish trout rod here Let's get the setups going now. I'm gonna show you guys three different setups that I like to use, and then we're gonna start making a big circle around this lake and applying each of them, and hopefully we can catch some fish for you. All right, so the first method I'm gonna show you guys here today is probably the most basic and easier for a beginner, and it's how to fish power bait on the bottom of the lake. It's a very easy setup. It's very easy to find the right things to use. You don't have to pick out any certain bait. You go to the tackle shop, you find any sort of power nugget, power bait, or power egg, that will get down on the bottom of the lake, rise up above the weed bed or whatever sort of structure you're fishing and be right there in the strike zone for the fish. So it's a very easy method, again, for any sort of beginner out there. So the reason I like this setup so much and it's so good for any beginner is because it's so easy to set up. I'm gonna start with a number four barrel swivel and you can find these at any gas station, any tackle store, anywhere basically in the world. Take that number four barrel swivel and tie it right to your 10 pound fluorocarbon here. And the knot I'm gonna use here is just your typical clinch knot. And it's gonna be seven wraps or eight, whatever you feel is fishier or luckier. I'm gonna go seven wraps around the main line. I'm gonna take the bitter end, that tag end, and I'm gonna put it through the hole that I've created above the metal on that swivel. So you see that little eyelet there? I'm gonna stick it right through there, give myself about an inch, inch and a half. And then you can see how it's created that little loop, add a little bit of moisture to it so that it doesn't burn your line. And then I'm gonna pull it tight just like so. You see that little tag end, you see that knot, and I got my swivel tight on there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece of fluorocarbon, usually lighter than the line that's on your swivel so that you don't lose your whole setup if you do get snagged. So I'm gonna take another 10 pound or an eight pound piece of fluorocarbon, 
depending on how deep the water is in front of you where you're fishing and how much off the bottom you want that is the length that you want your, your leader line, which can vary. If you guys are on a very mossy lake and you know there's a lot of weeds, you can see weeds in front of you go longer. Sometimes you can cast up to a four to a five foot leader today. I'm gonna do your typical three. I'm going from my chest all the way out to my arm. Lock that in there and I'm gonna cut this stuff. Lock that in there. So I'm gonna use the exact same knot that I just used to tie onto my barrel swivel to the other end of that barrel swivel, just like so. Seven wraps. Back through the eye I created. Wet your knot and pull it tight. And you can leave those tag ends. Sometimes if they're that short, as long as they're not big three, four inch tag ends, I don't mind leaving them for this presentation because this is actually on the bottom of the lake. It doesn't matter, the fish aren't gonna see it. Your bait's gonna be floating up above this off of the bottom and that those little tags won't really matter and that way you're not littering on the bank or wherever you're fishing. So I got that now. Now the hook selection. What I have here in my hand, depending on how deep it is you're fishing again and what kind of fish you're fishing for, how big they are, here's the two different kinds of hooks you can use. This is a bead hook. This is a must add bead hook, one of our addictive hooks that'll be soon coming out and this is a must add trout bait hook right here and you can see these little spurs on the back of that shank that actually keeps this power bait on or a worm on and for the other setups that we'll be showing you today this is the setup we'll be using but this is also an option if you can't find these hooks so i'm going to take my number six bait hook here and i'm going to use the exact same knot i used to tie my swivels together just like so i'm going to run that through there seven wraps so you guys can see, I only needed two things for this whole setup. Three things once I add my weight. But I added two, I added a swivel and a hook. So it's a very easy, very good way to start actually going out and trying to trout fish. And again, you can see why I like this method so much. I have a hook and I have a swivel and I'm about to add my weight. And it's that easy to go out and catch these fish. You put this stuff together, you put this power bait on, you cast it out where you see fish jumping around and odds are you're gonna get them. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm gonna do here today, because the wind's blowing pretty hard behind me, I'm actually just gonna take three number two split shots. These things are pretty big. So that way I'm gonna be sitting down on the bottom of the lake. It's very imperative that your line isn't moving around out there, even if the wind's blowing or whatever sort of, whatever sort of variables that you have that day. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my split shot here. I, I have the round ones here, the ones without the wings. The ones with wings work just as well. I'm gonna take that split shot, open it up, and I'm gonna apply it right to my main line, just like so. Once again, stick my fingernail in there. Pinch it down. Once again, slide that in there, pinch it down. And sorry to every dentist and mom out there, I forgot my pliers today. There we have it, there's our setup guys. We got our weights, we got our swivel, we got our three foot leader and we got our bait hook. Let's get some bait on this thing and get fishing. So I'm actually gonna show you guys how to use each one of these. I'm gonna start with the power eggs with the garlic because I like that scent. And that's something to be said about choosing your power bait. Try to find one with a shrimp scent, try to find one with a garlic scent, and then try to use ones with the original scents. Have that good variety. Don't break the bank going and buying this stuff, but buy a few of each one so that you have that variety and you have different things to show those fish on a day when they're not biting so good. So I'm gonna show you how to put on the actual bait. And the nuggets and the power eggs obviously are very self-explanatory on how you're gonna use those. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use my finger or there's little bait, or there's little tools that, that uh, Berkeley makes that you can actually ball this power bait up with. But I like to use my finger, pull a little chunk out of there. Usually about fingernail size, depending on how big your hands are. So that's about as big as my index fingernail. I'm gonna make myself a nice little ball with my fingers using that little, that little diamond shape just like that. I'm gonna take my hook and I'm gonna hook it right through that ball, just like so. And once it's on that hook, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna make that little triangle shape with my fingers. And then I'm gonna get this thing out there. So the beauty of this power bait, as we've been talking so far, is how it floats. So that's the best part. You can put it out there in that area where those fish are at, and it floats right off the bottom, just like you see here. It's sitting right on the surface because it's too shallow. And it stays right in that strike zone. It'll go up to its max buoyancy and straighten that leader all the way out and sit right in that zone that those fish are swimming through. The most important part of fishing the power bait is actually getting it out there. Casting too hard with this stuff will cause it to fly off every single time unless you're using the power eggs or the nuggets. So what I'm gonna do here to cast this, I'm gonna reel my, my weights up about a foot to a foot and a half away from my rod tip, just like so. Then I'm gonna make sure this round roller on the reel is actually pointed straight at the reel seat, as you can see here. So what you don't want is to try to reach for the line when this is all the way on that other side, try to open it and you see how it causes that bind. I'm gonna close that, I'm gonna go all the way to where it's facing me. I have that index finger holding the line and I'm gonna open that bail, making sure it doesn't fly out yet. 
I'm gonna put my rod tip 45 degrees over the bank right behind me. I'm gonna turn around and identify where I wanna cast. I'm gonna hold the rod butt with my other hand. And as I go through this motion and start flying forward, slow to fast, I'm gonna end my cast high in the air and I'm gonna keep my eyes locked right where I want my stuff to go. Don't keep your eyes on your bait flying through the air, keep it locked on the spot in the, in the lake that you want it to be. So I'm gonna look out, I want it somewhere in this area, I'm gonna keep my eyes locked, end high, slow to fast, nice and easy, and there it is, we're fishing. Next thing we're gonna do is find ourselves either a rod holder or a spot in the sand to stick our rod butt. And we're gonna leave this rod sitting at a 45 degree angle with its tip facing the lake, just like so. So I'm gonna set this right here, just because I'm not going far. Set that rod right in here like this. So I got my rod sitting on my rod holder. I'm gonna take my line and I'm gonna look out at the lake. What I don't want is a ton of slack line laying on the top of the water and floating towards me. I wanna take my reel and reel up just enough to make that rod tip bend ever so slightly. See how I have that very soft bend and I have a nice taut line going all, all the way into the middle of the lake. And the beauty of that, that braided line is because it's so sensitive and it has no stretch, if anything out there touches my bait, you're gonna see it in the rod tip just like this. So if it's sitting out there and a fish bites, you're gonna see that tip start to wiggle and it's gonna start to jerk and there's gonna be some life going on and you're gonna see it start moving and going faster. So we're gonna leave this thing in there. Oh my God, I just saw a giant roll. We're gonna leave our bait out there, we're gonna be patient and we're gonna sit back, enjoy a beverage, relax in the sun and hopefully these fish will bite for us. Okay, so this has been soaking for about 20 minutes or so. I'm gonna reel this back in and I'm gonna to switch to a different kind of power bait. A good way to be really effective while out here trout fishing on any sort of lake is use the gear that you bring. I already tried my chartreuse power bait. I've been using it for about 20 minutes. It hasn't been working. I have, I've seen fish jump around my bait. I know it's not actually catching the fish. So I'm gonna go and use something else that I brought. And that's why we go and buy a variety of stuff because some days different scents, different styles, different shapes work better than others. So I'm gonna take my power eggs here. These have a really strong garlic scent to them. So you're having a good a variety of normal power bait scent uh, garlic and then also a shrimp scent works really, really good. I don't have any shrimp scent stuff with me today, but I do have some Pro Cure shrimp scent, which works just as good putting it on power bait or spinners or whatever else. So I'm gonna take these power eggs. I don't need to go through both of them because these things are nice and tough. Totally different color sequence, different smell, different everything. Put it right there on my hook and we're ready to go. I'll let that hit bottom. Reel it up tight. So the next setup I'm gonna show you is how to fish artificial and real live night crawlers under an addicted fixed float system. This is an addicted fixed float. This is our steelhead version. We have panfish and trout versions coming out very soon, so be on the lookout for those. And it's a really nice inline float that works very well for this adaption. So I have my same rod setup that I showed you before. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take two of my rubber grommets these little guys right here. I'm gonna first put one of them right on my main line, just like so. Then I'm gonna take my actual main line and run it through the hole in my bobber like this, so that it lays flat right along the line. Once that line comes out the other side, I'm gonna put my other rubber grommet on that line. Wet my end of my bobber a little bit and slide that grommet right onto the end. Then I'm gonna take my top one that I'd already put on my line slide that thing down and I'm gonna add it right to the top end of the bobber. So wetness again, it'll just help that grommet go over. And you can see how I have these two brass weights on here. For trout, I'm gonna use both of those weights. If I'm gonna be fishing for salmon or bigger trout in like a stream or a creek, you're gonna to wanna to take one of these off so that you don't have your bobber overweighted. So I'll have this right on my main line. And the nice part about this thing is it slides right up and down that fluorocarbon line that I've tied on to my, my braided line. So it goes right up and down. And this is one, again, a very, very, very easy setup for you beginners out there. So I'm gonna take that now. I got my, just my main line. I got my number six Mustad bait hook once again. And I'm gonna tie that main line that I ran through my bobber right to that hook. Just like so. Same clinch knot, same everything. Basically the same setup, just a different presentation. This one's actually going from the surface and going down to the strike zone, then sitting on the bottom and going up to those fish. So I have my addicted inline fixed float, just like so. 
I got my leader and I got that all the way down to my hook. So if you're using any sort of artificial worm, whether it be a Mad River or like a Berkeley power bait worm, you're not gonna use any weight for that. But if you're using some sort of actual night crawler or earthworm, you're gonna wanna add a little split shot to that. So first I'm gonna show you the weightless one. What I have here, these, comes in, these come in all different sorts of colors and sizes. These are the Berkeley power worms. They work really good. They got a nice power bait smell to them. Plus a really cool presentation. And I'm gonna take this run it right through the top of the head there and right out the body. Slide it up just a little bit so that tail's kind of in line with that hook and there we are, we're fishing. So the most important part of this worm tutorial is using the power worms take a different presentation and a different style of fishing than fishing the actual worm. So let's go to the lake really quick. Let's show you guys how to fish these and see if we can get a fish on it. So the difference in between this and the power bait fishing, obviously, is that we have the float on the surface and our bait falling down to the fish. The contrary to that actual power bait we're using, these power worms, they actually do sink. As you watch, I'll throw it in here and it slowly sinks to the bottom, ever so slightly, just like so. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw that out there. I'm gonna let that thing slowly sink to the bottom just with basically the weight of the hook and slowly let that thing fall in about every 10 to 15 seconds, I'm gonna lift that back towards me and reel it back in a little bit. And so I'm, I'm covering water with this one. I'm actually moving around the lake, I'm casting, and I'm going counterclockwise or clockwise on the bank wherever I can be walking, and I'm casting this out there and fishing it back to myself each time. So here we go, I'm gonna show you this method. Same thing, keeping your rod tip a little bit higher off the ground because you don't wanna be snagging that leader chucking that thing as far as you can out there. The nice part about those addicted inline floats is that they have quite a bit of weight to them. Jesus Christ. Oh, blooper reel. Blooper reel, everybody. Totally tangled. Oh, and that's how it's done right there. So total blooper first cast, but that's okay. Let's try it again. A Little bit of a wind gust on that one. I'm gonna throw that as far as I can out in the lake. Ooh, that was a good cast. And I'm gonna let that thing sit there. And the best thing to do is, especially even on a windy day when this thing's kind of just floating along and moving that worm along, is just let that happen. Every 10 to 15 to 30 seconds, I'm gonna reel that thing in about 10 feet. I'm gonna just bring that thing to the surface and then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna let it just slowly fall again. And so I'm gonna continue that on and on and on. And after each cast that I make, I'm gonna change the direction that I'm casting and or walk down the bank with my feet and start covering ground. This is a hunting method, a lot like the next method we're gonna show you guys, which is gonna be hardware fishing. So I'm gonna start using this method, working my way around the bank and see if we can catch them. So it's been sitting there for about 20 seconds. All I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reel it tight. You see that bobber pointing at me. I'm gonna bring it about 20 feet this way and then I'm gonna drop it back down again. So normally, if you're gonna fish this setup, you're not gonna use any weight with these power worms because it'll actually slowly sink. But today we have a very windy day. That bobber is gonna be moving the whole time and kind of counteracting the presentation we're gonna make. So we're gonna add just a very small split shot to this. Again, I'm using this eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of my little minis here, just enough to take that thing down. That way I can get the correct presentation out there when I start casting this. Pinch that switch shot. I tied a little loop knot in that so that that's, that split shot doesn't move. If you pinch that thing down tight enough, it just won't move naturally. So that'll work for me for now. Let's go fish this thing. Okay, here we go. This is a little bit harder to cast with this method because you have all that line out below that fixed float. So make sure to keep that rod tip high, about a foot above the bobber, just like so, holding that rod butt, firing high and letting your rod tip end high in the air, getting that thing as far out there as you can. And because of that weight and because of that wind, that thing's gonna be slowly sinking as it goes through there. So every about 10 to 15 seconds, I'm gonna close my bail. I'm gonna just reel that thing about 10 feet towards me, and then I'm gonna stop and let it sink again. So the presentation you have here is this thing's going towards you, it's going to the surface, and then it falls back down slowly. And then you pull it again and it goes towards you, and it falls back down slowly. And all, as that thing falls, it looks like a natural bait falling into that strike zone of that fish, something that they might be actually chasing in the lake. So reeling that thing slowly towards you and then letting it fall, reeling it slowly towards you until it's all the way back into the bank, then we'll repeat and recast. All right, now we're gonna show you how to use the actual night crawler, so the live bait version of this. And this is gonna work for any sort of like mealworm or earthworm or night crawler or anything like that. What I wanna do first, these are huge, these are really big ones, so I'm just gonna use little chunks. So I'm gonna take that, you can either use scissors or your fingers, it's a little brutal on your fingers, but then I'm gonna take that end that I actually ripped off, I'm gonna put that hook right through 
that body all the way around and run it all the way up onto the base of my hook, just like so. There we go, I got it, perfect little chunk. The thing about using too big of a night crawler is that these fish will come up and they'll bite the end of your worm off, they'll short bite you and they'll steal your bait without ever touching your hook. Shorter the worm, the better a lot of times if they're actually eating this stuff. The only other different thing I'm gonna do here with the same setup is add a little bit more weight because we want this a little bit more suspended straight down under the bobber. Unlike the plastic worm that we want going up and down and fluttering in the current, we want this thing down and in that strike zone permanently. So I'm gonna add one more little split shot there. I'm gonna crimp that other split shot down. I got two split shots on there. Let's go fish it. So same ideas with the plastic worm, keep your rod tip very high in the air, identify your spot you wanna to cast to, hand on the butt of the rod, look to where you wanna cast, and fire that thing out there. With those real night crawlers, you're gonna to need to be a little bit more careful on how hard you cast that because they might fly off. I like to think about how many things I have out there that should be splashing. I have the bobber, I have the weight, and then I have my hook. And so if I only see three splashes when I throw that out there, I know I got the right amount of stuff on my line. If I see four, that means my bait came off. So. The best thing to do now, you have that out there in the water, you're gonna set this in the rod holder like we did the power bait, and you're just gonna wait and watch that bobber. So the way I'm gonna be able to tell I'm getting a bite with this bobber system is that it's just gonna shoot under. It's the same with the plastic worm that we're fishing. As we cast out, we let it come towards us, we let it go down, and the key is to not set hook until that bobber is completely gone. You wanna wait till that thing submerges, goes all the way underwater, then you're gonna reel tight and set the hook. A lot of times you're gonna to have to jump for the rod and get it so it's gonna have time to get down, but you want that fish to swallow that bait and actually get it all the way into its mouth so that you can hook it properly. If you get them on the edge of the lip, you get them just on the side of the mouth, a lot of times they'll come off during the fight. So letting that bobber sink all the way down and actually be pulled away by that fish is very imperative. So the last but not least method of all, and what might be my favorite, is fishing with some sort of hardware or artificial lure. And what I have here is my box full of those. I have different sort of bell bodies, I have rooster tails, and I have panther martens. I also have some of my favorites as the cast master. So we're gonna use the exact same rod setup, the two to six pound, the braided line. The braided line is almost very imperative for this setup in particular, because it'll allow you to cast these farther. Making a far cast a lot of times with trout on lakes like this is an advantage. So some of my favorite lures here are the black and the gold panther. Martin. This one seems to always be my go-to and one of my very favorites for catching these fish. The other color I really like is the yellow body and the silver blade. You see the difference in the contrast here. Two very different colors, very same different presentation, but offering a different look and a different color sequence to those fish in that lake depending on what mood they're in that day. The other ones I have are the blue and the silver castmaster, arguably two of the best lures that you could possibly use for trout fishing. I also have the different sequence of colors of the rooster tails. Rooster tail is nice because it has that little bit of a feather behind it, that marabou, and it allows a little bit extra action on the back end of that spinner, and it's a different size blade. These ones you need to reel a little bit quicker, these ones a little bit slower, and we'll show you that in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my very favorite one here. I'm gonna go with the black and the gold blade, and I'm gonna set this up on my rod. The nice part about this one is it goes really nicely. If you're only fishing one rod, it goes nicely because you can use the exact same setup as you do with your power bait setup off the bottom. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull my hook off from that power bait and make sure to throw that on the bank. I'm gonna take it right where that hook was tied on. I'm gonna tie that spinner with my same seven twists back through the eye, my clinch knot. and we're ready to fish. I had three leads on this to, be, to begin with here, so I'm actually gonna take these things off. This thing I can fish just by itself, but it's really imperative at times to have that barrel swivel in line like that because it's gonna allow that spinner blade to spin and it's not gonna twist up your main line and then so on and so forth, twist down into your braided line. And it'll make a mess, it'll cause you to tangle, it'll cause your line to start making big knots in it. So I got my favorite color on here. Let's start casting this thing and start working around the bank. So the best way to be the most effective fishing any sort of hardware is to break it down into like a science. Try to break down the lake mathematically where you start from one side and you work your way to the other. Normally if I'm gonna be fishing any sort of hardware like this, I'm gonna start on one end of the lake, 
I'm gonna make a cast, like a pie chart, one here, one 10 feet to the right, one 10 feet to the right, one 10 feet to the right, one down the bank, and then I'm gonna move out of my casting distance so I can cover more water. So this is what I would call a hunting setup, kind of like the worm or the, the plastic worm where we're casting out and we're slowly reeling it back in and covering water. This works really well for that. It helps you locate those trout and you can actually use this to find them and then use your power bait setups and different things like that to sit on those fish and key in and catch a lot of them. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna start casting in that circumference from left to right, clockwise, and moving my way all the way down the bank. So the presentation you want with the spinner or with the cast master is a pretty steady reel. What I want to identify one is how deep it is. This is a very clear lake that I'm on today, so I can tell it's not much more than about eight feet deep out in front of me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast out, it's gonna hit the water, and I'm gonna immediately close my bail and start to reeling. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep me out of the weeds and it's gonna keep me fishing in the strike zone. So I'm gonna cast to the left there, and I'm gonna cast one straight out in front of me. Reeling that back in, keeping that nice consistent speed, and waiting for that fish to bite. The key is, is to get that spinner in front of those fish and be able to allow that spinner to present itself in such a fashion that it's trying to get away from those fish. And that's gonna key in on their natural feeding habits and make them wanna chase it down and grab it. It's not so much that this looks like some sort of natural food to them, but it is that it's shiny, it's flashy, it's loud, and it's in their face, and they wanna kill it because they're a predator. Now that I made that cast, I'm going a little bit further right. Get it in the water, get that thing moving. And then I'm gonna move down the bank about 30 yards. Okay, now that I've made my three casts in that circumference, let's move. So now that I've moved down the bank, about 30 yards out of my casting zone, I'm gonna cast to that left side again and I'm gonna start reeling it back in. And keeping a good consistent speed with your reeling is what's most important. You want that spinner to stay off of the bottom and stay off of snags. So a nice steady reel, just enough to either see your blade spinning or feel that tension against your line, just that slight tension. And with this braided line, with this addicted enforcer braid and that spinner, and keeping this nice light rod straight at that spinner blade, you can almost feel it ticking and moving as it spins around the wire on that spinner like that. So I made my first cast. I'm gonna move a little bit further right, get it out there and bring it back in. So now that I've made quite a few presentations with the spinner, I'm obviously not getting any bites. Now what I need to realize is that they might want something different. So just like the power bait, just like the style or scent of power bait, you're gonna change it out. You brought multiple kinds of lures to the lake, you might as well try them. So I'm gonna take and switch completely different to a spoon here, which is a cast master. I'm gonna grab my silver and blue cast master and I'm gonna start using the same presentation sequence, but fishing it a little bit different. So why this might work so well and why you wanna be changing up a lot is this is a completely different color. It's a different presentation style. It's moving faster through the water and it moves at a different speed. So it's a completely different style of bite of which those fish might be reacting to that day. Okay, here we go. The other nice part about the cast master is how far you can cast it. They're very heavy. That way you don't need to really let them sink and you're gonna fish it with a little bit different technique. What you see what I'm doing here is I'm giving this a little bit of a twitch or a jig as we would call it. I'm reeling about five or six times and then lifting my rod tip about six feet in the air, letting that thing rise and then fall down to the bottom of the, of the lake and then rise again and flutter and then fall and flutter back down to the bottom of the lake. And what that does is it almost acts like a dying prey. Again, it's something wounded, something, something that a predator or a fish that's gotta eat needs to go chase after in order to stay alive. So I'm gonna give it that jerk and that little fall and then I'm gonna jig and then let it fall. And then I'm gonna jig, and as it's falling, I'm reeling in a couple times so that that thing doesn't fall on the bottom and end up getting snagged. Cast a little bit further to the right. Well, everybody, there you have it. Three awesome methods and great ways to get out there and have fun catching trout. It's great for kids, it's great for adults, it's great for anybody that wants to enjoy the great outdoors, and we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see more awesome trout content and videos just like this one, go up here and click this link to the next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn your bells on so you can see when they come out. Give us a thumbs up and comment below with what you guys thought of today's video or any questions you have, and you could be the comment of the day, just like this guy right here. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. You stay fishy, and we'll see you out there.